All right, what's going on, guys? Graham Juice and Matthews here with Fan Side and ahead of new episodes of Wipeout starting on January 11th on TBS next year in 2022. We got the on field host, the official on field host from Wipeout, Camille Costick herself. Camille, how are you? Woohoo! I'm doing good. I love talking about Wipeout, and you have the coolest background I've ever seen. I'll do- <laughs> So congratulations for that. I appreciate it. This is probably the closest I'm going to get to the actual obstacle course without being on it itself. Obviously, you're front and live for the action with new episodes coming up um, next month as we speak right now in January, like I said, on January 11th. Uh, yeah. Talking a little bit about it, what were your overall impressions coming out of season one? It had a lot of success on TBS, a lot of positive feedback. What were your thoughts and being involved in the process? I mean, I was, I grew up watching Wipeout. So I actually, it was a funny story. I remember when I, when I did the chemistry read mm-hmm. uh, and I, and I was off of the job, you know, the first person I called was my family. So I had called my little sister and I told her, my goodness, I'm going on Wipeout. John <laughs> Cena's one of the hosts. She grew up being such a huge John Cena fan. And she was like, can I be your contestant partner? And I was like, wait, Julia, I have been hosting like my whole life. Yeah. This is like the biggest hosting job to date of my career. Uh, I'm going to be a host in the show, not a contestant. So that was good times. Um, but no, I, I knew this was going to be fun. I knew it was going to be an electric environment, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things, just like the contestants that I learned from interviewing every single one of them. They say, I've watched it. I played the video game. I'm going to come on the show. I'm going to crush the big red balls mm-hmm. and they're wiped out every single time. So it's kind of the same thing. I was like, I've watched shows. I'm, I know what to expect. I'm going to be able to handle this. So I'm going to put my dog down. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you just, you don't know what you're going to get being in the thick of it. I literally am not only the host of the field, I am the first person that they need to talk with mm-hmm. the second they step off of that qualifying round. And uh, let's just say I was not prepared for the uh, huffing and puffing, um, <laughs> the burps in my face. Uh, sometimes people puke. Um, it is, it is uh We don't hide any of it. We share it too. We want everybody to experience what I experience. And uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, Definitely a lot of things that I wasn't uh, prepared for when I auditioned and I got the job. So (laughs) yeah, well, kind of going off that, how do you even prepare for something like that? I mean, are there certain things you have to kind of know going in or are you just kind of getting thrown into the thick of it, so to speak? I mean, I don't, I don't definitely don't get prepared for that part. It's more so (laughs) just have fun with it. And I think that's the best part about this is I'm not handed a script. I really get to just speak my mind, speak my experience and um, learn more about the contestants than just watching them run the course. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to hear about if it's a couple, if it's somebody that they had met in the street being like, come out for the show with me. Or if it's um, family members, it's mother, son, what their dynamic is. Are they, did they get a fight before they ran the course? Do they love each other? Do they have a great relationship? Are we going to banter with the siblings at home who didn't get picked to come to the show? Um, there's people whose significant others said, definitely don't do it. They go on the show and they say, hey, honey, I'm sorry. See you when I get home. Um, so it's it's really fun. It's it's more than just watching the obstacle course. The interview rounds with them really, I think, makes the show mm-hmm spectacular uh getting to know them and then watching them go to the end i mean there's times that i've even cried when people have won and i've i literally met them that day so i really connect with them and try to get everybody to connect at, the, at home it's um so i have a lot of fun doing it um do you do you want to go on the show i, I would try i would i might i, I would probably fare, fail spectacularly but i would love to give it a shot um i'm I in the same boat wipe out for nothing <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the same boat as someone who grew up watching the show too um, like when it first started, what is it? 2021, 13 years ago, like I'm 10, 11 years old, whatever I was at that point. Like I was the exact same way of someone who grew up watching the show. So to find out that it's coming back, that you're a part of it, John Cena is a part of it. Nicole Byer, I'm a wrestling guy. So to see Cena on there is awesome too. Yeah. Um, so cool. And I'm sure there's a lot of people and watching the show myself that had family members that were on the show originally, like kids mm-hmm. that are now on the show and, you know, vowed to avenge their parents and stuff. So it makes for some cool stories. Um, yeah. So for you in, in going from like the first episode to these new episodes is there anything that you kind of learn from your early experiences to when you kind of when you wrapped up at the end there that you know some learning experiences and stuff that you can improve upon uh you know from episode one to where you guys kind of wrapped up most recently yeah I think I would say I I tried to do it each time but it's it's fun to go back and watch before we we film you know the newer episodes and I I realized that even if I am interviewing contestants number one no. to contest at number 10 at the end of the day because we have about 10 teams that run every single day every single episode um 
I want to give them that same amount of enthusiasm as the first one mm. because they're coming here. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, except for those people that you had just said, you know, family members who were on the show in the past who come back for that revival moment or that revenge moment and try to win again. Um, but those stories are so cool. And I think I would say, I just want to continue being just as excited as the first person. And I truly, I truly am, but we're all human beings and it takes a lot, you know, I, I, there's so much going on, the big red balls, the splashes, the action, everyone out of breath. I mean, a lot of the times I, I really do have to continue to run the show, even if I'm trying to tell the story of the contestants because yeah. they're so out of breath, they can't even talk. Um, so I try to read their minds. Um, but I would just say, I think something about myself is that I really do have it in me. You know, the mind is a very powerful place mm -hmm. and just really pulling every ounce of me and leaving it out in the course. I think I, I can confidently say I do that. Um, and I also learned that I'm a morning person suddenly. Um, when I wake <laughs> up here and I'm not on, um, you know, Hollywood time of, of showing up to yeah. set in the morning. Listen, I get picked up at like 4.15 in the morning and I go and I go home when the sun goes down. So you can really do anything. I am not a morning person if you're just getting to know me now, but um, I, I apparently could do it uh, for seasons on end. So uh, you are capable of anything that you put your mind to. <laughs> just know that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just say, I learned so much from the contestants. They seize the opportunities. Um, a lot of them, you know, are working against injuries or coming back from something or mm -hmm. um, overcoming crazy obstacles in their life and, and just want to live it up to the fullest and, and celebrate that in the show. So I learned a lot from them and really get motivated. So I think a lot of people watching at home will be inspired too. Awesome. Yeah. Every single episode is like a new adventure. Every single episode is a new experience with the stories that we hear, what happens. Every episode is different from the last. So it's great in that respect as well. But you mentioned working with Nicole and specifically John and your reaction to finding out that they would be on the show with you as fellow hosts. Can you share any stories of meeting John for the first time and Nicole and, and stuff like that and working alongside them this season? Wow, the first time. So I actually had previously met John and I was actually hosting a carpet at the Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year Awards. Well, okay. and he, he was Sports Person of the Year. And I interviewed him on the carpet there. I was very nervous. <laughs> um, but like I said, he's so professional and he keeps cool. And yeah. uh, he made it so easy to talk with and have a couple laughs with. So it was cool. I remember for the first time when we met doing this show again, I said, you know, do you remember that I had actually interviewed you and now we're we're hosting alongside each other and he he you know he didn't forget so it's always nice when you have people that you know are all around the world constantly meeting new people when they remember you know those little moments in their life um that stuck with them it was it was cool and so it was um definitely something you just you don't know what your fate holds you don't know what the destiny holds you know if i had just been like hey see you on the big screen one day yeah. we're gonna alongside each other so it's it's cool and it's such a small world too how um I remember in that interview with, with John for Sports Illustrated, we had talked about if I thought that he did a good job mimicking my boyfriend, Rob Gronkowski, because he had done a little bit on SNL um, yeah. playing Gronk um, in Jeopardy as, as Gronk in a game of Jeopardy. And um, so it's funny how they have that connection and Rob has done some stuff with the WWE and here I am on Wipeout on TBS with um, John myself. So it's like we have this little love triangle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All working with each other somehow, some way. <laughs> yeah, I know it works out perfectly. Yeah, I think John had just come back to WWE around the time that Gronk was with them very briefly last year. Yeah. So maybe at some point we could see more interaction between them on screen. But speaking about yourself, I mean, 2021, as we wind down the year, has been a great year for you. Obviously all your hosting gigs and being involved with Wipeout but you're involved with Free Guy too. You appeared in the movie a couple of months ago with Ryan Reynolds and everyone else involved in the movie. Uh, any more acting aspirations going forward? You want to, that kind of scratch the itch of what you want to do with acting moving forward? Oh my gosh. I had done a couple of cameos here and there and you know, yeah. that, was a, that was definitely a great, uh, talk about a breakout role being alongside of Ryan Reynolds and Channing Tatum and, and Jody Comer. Yeah. Um, I mean, Joe Curie, it, it, I mean, some of the biggest names in film and I, being directed by Sean Levy was such a treat. And the way that they treated me, the way that they taught me, I mean, Sean was even teaching me. I, I actually didn't even think I was gonna get the role. Sean had truly taken the, the role director mm -hmm. and had directed me through my audition. And I remember thinking, this was so cool, such a great opportunity. It was almost like a free acting class, um, the way that Sean had taken the time to walk through the script and really play out Bombshell the way that he had envisioned it. Um, cause I had read it a certain way and he wanted to see it a way that he had, he had it in mind. And so we went through that, um, 
really quickly in the mm -hmm. audition. And so to get the call that I had landed that role was super special. And I was able to, you know, thank him in person and be like, wow, thank you for seeing something in me and allowing me to live out this role because it was, I mean, still, I'm still like on cloud nine from even the premiere um, this summer. It, it's, I feel really lucky meeting Blake Lively there. She's been like a girl crush of mine forever. I can't play it too cool here. Um, so that was, it's really been special. And I saw that they, the movie just won at People's Choice Awards. Um, I mean, they've been breaking records in the box office and, and just being a part of such a box office hit. I'm geeking out, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I am, I am constantly, you know, telling my team, I want all the auditions. It, it truly, um, don't know if we could swear here, it scares the shit out of me to um, act, but I think that's why I love it so much. It really pushes me out of my comfort zone. I'm so used to looking down the barrel, hosting, speaking what comes to my mind and comes to my heart. So acting, you know, pretending like the camera isn't there and really channeling a character that's outside of who I am mm -hmm. um, is a real challenge and I love it. So, um, I am in a film called Monsters of California, directed by Tom DeLonge from Blink-182. Nice. So that's pretty cool. That was an epic experience on set. <laughs> so that film will be coming out next year. Um, I had a lot of fun filming a Hallmark movie um, that is out now as well. So there is, um, yeah, I hope that you'll continue seeing me on the big screen because I have a lot of fun doing it. So in the meantime, you can count on me being on your screen for TBS with Wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And congrats on the gig. And as we wind down here, it's funny that you mentioned that. What, what a crazy journey that you've had with all the hosting stuff you've done, obviously, with Free Guy and, and stuff going forward with acting. Uh, Wipeout, obviously, as well. I'm a Higginham guy. I'm from Higginham, Connecticut. That's where I live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend. What was that? Did we go to school together? Did no, so I I graduated from North Brantford. My I live here now. My girlfriend actually went to the high school. She was class of 2017. Um, my brother was class of 2018. So a couple of years behind. Um, but they wanted me to ask, like, what at what point? Because he was involved with HT H HK TV as well. Yeah, I was a yeah, host yeah, yeah. for HKTV. Yeah, 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 yeah. So kind of going off of that, what was like the moment during your experience involved with that and everything you've done around that period and after that? Uh, that kind of made you want to pursue a role in communications from that point forward. Cause that was really what kind of kicked it off for you. It kind of kicked it off from that point. Thing. I mean, I, it, who would have known that my small town high school was going to literally change the trajectory of my life. Yep. I was in seventh grade and we were offered broadcast journalism courses and I didn't know what that was. That name just sounded really um, fancy and mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know what that actually meant. So when I signed up for that course, little did I know that was going to spark like the greatest passion and open me up to everything that I, that I, I live to this day. And uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to go down and our high school and middle school is connected together. We have this renowned television studio, yep. it's a local access station in Connecticut. And uh, yeah, I, I thought every school had that. So it wasn't until I went, I, you know, got to, talk to other high school students or go off to college that when I would meet kids at my university, it would be some of their first times having a TV studio at their university. And they mm -hmm. thought that was so cool. Here I am spoiled already knowing what it's like to film on set for, you know, a local, local access station. So, um, I feel really blessed that I, I grew up in a town that had that, you know, you know, being, you know, had them killing with picking them. There's not much. There's a lot mm -hmm. of cows. There's like two stoplights and maybe a Dunkin' Donuts. So, having a television studio at our school was so freaking cool. So it is really fun for me to go back. I used to host the live telethons for the holiday show at HK. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to head back to Connecticut and try to stop through um, there. I love supporting it. The causes that they do it for the money that they raise for different organizations and charities mm -hmm. is, is so cool to be a part of. Um, and I love that they continue that tradition. Um, but yeah, Mr. Lewis was my, my, TV school teacher yeah. and I learned everything from audio boards, the directing to post-production to lighting. And, um, but I wanted to do it all. I wanted to somehow set up the tripod, be the on-camera host. Mm -hmm. and then edit. So I, I figured out a way to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been something I've always hoped and dreamed of doing. Um, and I have HKTV to thank for that for sure. So shout out to you guys. I'm constantly supporting. Hopefully I'll see you again for this holiday season. And um, yeah. If you're a part of that program, keep doing what you're doing because maybe one day you could be a national television host. <laughs> so set me up for success. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly. There's not many success stories, it seems, that come out of Higginham, Manhattan, Kellingworth area, but obviously you first and foremost, which is awesome. You were spot on to everything that's in the area, except for the, a couple of pizza places too, Dino's included. Yes. Oh my gosh, Dino's. <laughs> oh, wow. AJ's. Yep. Jack's. Yes. All of them. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. But obviously people can catch new episodes with you on it on Wipeout. You, Nicole Byer, John Cena, everyone involved in the group. New episodes starting Tuesday, January 11th on TBS. It's going to be the second half of season one. People are going to have a look that, that to look forward to. Camille, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for the time. Congrats on all the success and best Thank luck moving forward as well. Thank you. And congratulations to you. Look at you. Higginham representing. <laughs> interviewing. Representing Higginham. Absolutely. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Camille. All right. Thank you.